All right, let's go ahead and break this loose. Take this out. Next step, let's go finish this off. Probably gonna put a new belt in our sander because I want the way I wanna work this, I wanna, I wanna catch this outside radius and I wanna kinda blend the side here in and, uh, and you know, that, that will shape that lumpy right there after that then we're just going to kind of like we're just going to roll and smooth with rotary burr sanders and whatever and we're just going to get this all to flow in just like just like the casting is in here now we're not going to be able to duplicate the casting surface uh we might get close to it with maybe needle needle gun texture or something like that or we'll just leave it we'll leave it as is and it'll be a nice good uh polished piece fared in on this section right here let's go play with it we'll see all right we're changing out the belts and I just went and got the box of belts and I had one left in here so before I even put this on I went in and uh, I, I, I get these from MSC so I think they're about 13 14 bucks a piece and I ordered another four of them They'll come and I'll put them, I'll probably get them tomorrow and I'll put the box away so that I always have them. These are very, very long lasting, good cutting belts. And I, I think, I think somebody asked me once before what grid I actually put on here and I, I think I said 100, but I'm actually, I actually use 80 grit. And I have a, foxtail broom around here somewhere where'd it go there it is I just like to knock a little bit off of this uh, set of ways right here and this belt still has a little bit of life I could actually put this in a box just to have it as a spare um, if I really wanted to get in sometimes having a, a little bit duller belt um, it's pretty good on some things. You may not want it to be as aggressive. I just happen to have this aluminum casting and I know I want it, I want it crisp and I want it clean. And All right. But there's no holes or rips or tears in this belt at all. Um, they're well worth the dollar for these belts. Also, you'll notice that some of your other cheaper belts, you'll get them on there and with the humidity, the moisture, whatever, and they start growing. And they actually, they track back and forth. Like you're constantly working to keep the belt going down the middle. And these belts here really do track nice and for a long period of time. I'll put that one in, in uh, the box there when I get done. These are no, no direction on these belts as well they can go either direction so you put them on what's comfortable with you bearings are still doing good in this thing since I changed them out from the uh, stock bearings Okay, a little bit of tension. Then I just grab this uh, here so that I can steer it. Forget what 
the side piece. The side piece goes on first. And this little screw goes in the side. And then you leave it loose so you can get the alignment because part of this outside, outside guard here registers in the outside of this piece here. And that kind of ties it all together. Just, just like that right, right there. Now you're locked in there. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and come around and we'll start playing around with the aluminum part and shaping out that outside radius on there. Okay, now we're just gonna, this raised surface around here will hold, hold this up so we're not gonna be scratching any of this right here. Uh, we'll be able to use this right down on to here, which is easier to slide it and everything else. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use this edge of the belt here. And I'm just going to be working this area right here. Just trying to fare, fare that in a little bit. Closer to having this width or ring around the outside edge here. Okay, that's come close enough for me. <clears throat> I'll be able to shape that in. Okay, we're not able to get the the um, piece the way we're at the edge here. We're not able to get right in close to the edge here. So we're gonna shape that in by hand. Okay, I set a block of wood up here on the on the bench here so that I can work off the edge here. I want my debris to head down, so I'm not gonna have a bunch of stuff flying up in the air. And it's also, I'm going to be able to look at it without, <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to look at it so debris doesn't fly up in my face and everything will be kind of going down. Now the first thing I want to do is go ahead and bring this in close to here so that I have that curve the way I want it. And I'm just going to use this flapper wheel. This is, uh, uh, what grit is this? Uh, this is a 40 grit.
Okay, now I'm going to get a rotary burr and I'm going to kind of like play in a little bit uh, in some of the areas there that I can't quite get in with this here. And then we'll probably take the little two inch Rolex and we're going to kind of play with it after that. But that's a good start on the shaping right there. All right, I went and got my rotary burr. I like this cross hatch here because it has a small, small end on it and I can actually get that like in those, in those areas right there. And I plan on doing that kind of coming around here and a little bit right in here as well. And uh, I think the rest of it's going to be uh, gonna fair and pretty good. This is, this is pretty round. Um, it does, it's a little heavier over here and on the bottom side here. But this is, this is the diameter it should be right here. Um, so that's still shaping out pretty good. All right, let me... Uh, let me go ahead and get in position here. I got it set up on the block of wood here so that I can work comfortably. And I'm just going to work around and get this all smooth around this section right here. All right, I <clears throat> got in there with the, the little burr and I kind of even fared in a little bit here, a little bit here. It came in close to this nub right here so I could be representing somewhat like that. I went over the sander and I kind of went all the way around this outside, brought this diameter in, kind of symmetrical. It's still a little heavier down here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna come in with the next tool, and this is actually come you know I'll be able to fare this in a little bit here with this next tool as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put on the uh, little Rolox here, and this is 60 grit that I'll be using on here, and this is a coarse um, Scotch Brite type attachment that I put on there. It, that'll be the last of the finishing there. Uh, unless I want to go throw it on the buffer or whatever and kind of like gloss it up, but I, I doubt if I'm going to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to start start off with sanding and we'll go ahead and fair in just a little bit of the open open areas that we can get to. And let me see, I think I'm going to drop this down one just so that I can get in here and sort of get my arm down on the table to steady myself. Okay, now pretty much I think the rest of it is just to go ahead and, and give it a little bit of a blend that's a little more kind.
Okay, one of the last things I'm gonna do to kind of fair in and kind of blend in all my marks is taking the stainless steel wire wheel and kind of just burnishing the top of the surfaces here. I'm, I'm I'm happy with that and I I think All right, let's blow it out and let's go get our little fitting and we'll check the fit on it. And I think we can call that a wrap. All right, uh, just went in and got our little fitting here. We'll screw that in there. Of course, we're not gonna t tension it or tighten it down. It functions. in a location that he wanted it to be on the bike so he can reach down and easily access it <laughs> the longer you play with it <laughs> All right, that's cool. I'm gonna get acetone and wipe off my bluing right there. You know, this was a long road to go down, but I'm still giving the customer exactly what he asked for. And that was for this little valve to be installed on his head in that location and function. The mishap of not seeing a hollowed out cavity inside on the project, um, I, I, I was staring right at, staring at it, lining it and everything else and uh, uh, back into the depth that it was is an area that you can not see and I only felt it and then of course putting air to it kind of confirmed it and uh, but I show you and you keep on trucking you know it's not so much never give up never give in it's more so pay attention and know when you're not gonna get there with that shortcut all of us tempt to try it even myself sometimes but test yourself along the way and if it's not holding up do something different. Get in there. Open the, uh, you know, open the thing up until you can get to the area that needs to be repaired. 
If you can't stitch it back up, then you can't go in there, of course. But it's no different than welding or repairing a crack on a project that's broken or missing a piece. And this was a pretty nice piece to actually weld on and once we did get in there it, it was good material you can even even the machining and and how close and you can see why I like that 4643 rod to build up on and and uh, when I started repairing o-ring grooves on a cylindrical uh, spool uh, distributing system and came back and machined it afterwards and those those little dividers between the o-rings were standing up proud and, and blending in really nice. I knew this was a good rod so uh, and, and that was a job that I had uh, five six years ago. Well I'm looking forward to calling my customer up today and telling him that I salvaged it and he's actually got a part that he can pick up just like he planned and he can assemble it maybe I'll talk to him about maybe uh, when he gets it running maybe he's swinging on over and getting a little uh, follow-up on this with it running on the bike and the operation of the little valve here um, I'll talk to him about it until the next video get her done
Thank you.